Today I'm going to be making five minimal bullet journal weekly spreads in under eight minutes, but warning because this video is a chaotic mess. I'm only going to be using two pens, this Tombow brush pen and a Pentel gel pen, and I'm going to be making the weekly spreads on one page and not two because I'm running out of space in my journal. Be prepared for a bit of scribbling, but let's get into it because the timer starts right now. First up is the horizontal weekly spread. Now, while I'm making this, it's important to realize that A, these five weeklies are my most popular, at least the base of all my weekly spreads. So although you see me making my journal all pretty and elaborate, usually the base of all of the weekly spreads are going to be shown in this video. Similarly, colors can be added, but I just decided to be <laughs> challenging, and so I'm only using one color, but you can definitely add different colors, of course, in your own bullet journal. And C, in my opinion, weekly spreads should always start on a Monday, just like a calendar starts on a Monday, and if you disagree with me, I'm afraid you are just wrong. So <laughs> if you are a Sunday person, not a Monday person, um, go ahead and leave because this channel is not for you. <laughs> I'm kidding, but honestly, I want to stand on this hill until I die. Monday is the day they're supposed to start a calendar. But anyways, this this horizontal weekly spreads is really simple. Just divide each page into four and leave the last box for notes, a doodle, or a header. As you can see in this February weekly spread, I did the same thing. Divided the page into eight and left the last little section for notes. And I still had the space at the top for the header February and a little flower doodle. This one's even more minimal than I one I made in the video, but I think it's really cute and pretty and shows how I'm using this weekly spread in my actual journal. Let's jump over to the next weekly spread. It's going to be the same thing, but sideways because it is a vertical spread. Now, in my opinion, you can either do seven boxes and overlap the middle like I'm doing in this video right here or you can do an even amount of boxes like use eight boxes and use that last one for notes or like I did in this January weekly spread you can use six boxes and just smush two days into one box for the weekend for that last box this is something I see a lot of people doing especially if you have a lot less tasks to do on the weekend so just pick your preference I suppose whichever one floats your boat now and this weekly spread is nice because there's a lot of space at the top or bottom for art or quote or washi tape if you feel like adding some doodles as you can see here I added a little note section at the top along with the header weekly number two. It's important to look at task space for each box however because in the horizontal spreads there's more space but less lines and here there are more lines but less space to write all of your tasks so it just depends how much space you need, how big your handwriting is, how many to-do lists you have, you know to see how many bullets or words you can fit in each size of box but that's just really a personal preference and that's why the next two weekly spreads I'm going to show you might be more helpful because they blend the two sizes of boxes very nicely. This next weekly spread I'm going to be showing you is what I want to call the eight boxes and it's the best of both worlds and my personal favorite of the weekly spreads in this video. Basically all you have to do is divide each page into four boxes and there is the perfect height and width of each box for sufficient notes and lists. I think it's the perfect width and height to have perfectly enough bullet points for all the tasks in the day but also enough width that you can fully like write out each of your tasks and don't have to shorten them because there's not enough space. This is also the fastest weekly spread to make because all I had to do was essentially draw two T's and divvy up the spreads and now you have two pages divided into four blocks and it makes your life really simple. In this weekly spread I also added a little section called weekly three and I wrote a little calendar although because it was on a half spread I didn't have space for a full calendar but just pretend like it has all 31 numbers in there and that's basically it for this particular weekly spread. Now this has to be the most classic of classic weekly spreads ever. Like I feel like everyone who bullet journals uses this kind of spread but that's because it's really easy. As you can see I used this exact same weekly spread this May although it's quite a bit more doodly and much more interesting but I had space for all of my to do's even though this was an incredibly busy week and I think the weekly spread turned out really pretty and functional so this is definitely one to try if you're looking to make bullet journaling easier for you. Now before we get into the last two weekly spreads I want to take a minute and talk about my LTK shop. Now if you didn't know, Like to Know It is a place where you can link so many things and personally I use my LTK shop for linking stationery so if you're ever interested in what stationery I'm using especially from pictures on my Instagram you can definitely head over to my LTK shop and it has all of the links to the stationery I'm using so you can access links to specific stationery very quickly. Just as a disclaimer to be transparent these are affiliate links and so if you purchase one of those stationery a little bit comes back to me with no extra cost to you so if you want to support me and get yourself some new stationery my LTK shop is definitely a great place to do so so I will definitely have the link below if you want to go check it out and now let's get into the last two weekly spreads of this video. I must admit this next weekly spread style asks for the most thinking out of all of them. It's similar to the eight box, but each day is randomly placed along the spread, so it's much more organic matter. It's hard to come up with and requires a lot of thinking because the layouts are more original and I just don't want to recreate an old spread. I like to keep all of my spreads new and different, but I feel like every time I sketch one of these modular weekly spreads, they all just end up looking the same. Basically in the video, you can see that I just have sections for each of the days of the week. Although they are not in boxes, they can be, but I personally just don't have one here in this case. I also have a little section for notes 
and a little quote lash playlist at the very bottom. Another benefit about this spread is that it's easier to mold each box around a piece of artwork or ephemera. As you can see in this March weekly spread, I was playing around with scrapbooking in the top corner and it's also easier to play with fonts because there's more room to change the sizes and width of your lettering, etc. So overall, it's definitely a more versatile weekly spread, although it requires a little more thinking on my part. Okay, now let's move into the rolling weekly. And this one is a little different than all the others because it divides to-do lists with events. So for my bullet journal, I mostly have to-dos in my weeklies and a lot of events are focused in my calendars, which is why these last four weeklies have been to-do list focused. But some people are different and use their bullet journaling more for events. So for you event people out there, this weekly spread is for you. It just separates one side into daily boxes for events. As you can see on the left, I have eight little boxes and one last one for notes. And then on the right, it has a long mass to-do list for the entire week. And basically you could just list out your to-dos and draw a little dot under what day it needs to occur on. Sometimes when I have a to-do busy week, but not to-dos that are focused on every day, this can also be very helpful because you can change the date that you need to do that task by adding another notch on the lines, as you can see here on the screen. In this example from September, you can see that I had all of my to-do lists on the left, and then I have different boxes with my events on the right, and it made it really easy to plan out my week. But with that, oh, deep breath guys, we have finished all five weekly spreads in exactly seven minutes and 53.83 seconds. I'm actually so proud of me. <laughs> a round of applause for me, please because my hand was cramping just a smidge. So the question is, what can you take from this video? Well, for one, don't try this challenge because I'm embarrassed that my calligraphy looks this bad and is still being displayed on the internet. Two, if I can make five, albeit half spread, bullet journal weeklies and my bullet journal in under eight minutes, then you could definitely take a couple minutes every week to make a weekly spread in your own bullet journal. It doesn't have to be fancy or decorated. You can literally just letter Monday through Sunday or Sunday through Saturday for one of those people and call it a day. But I'm here to prove that even for you busy bees out there, taking a couple minutes to make a weekly spread and organize your upcoming to-dos is definitely possible. Speaking of weekly spreads, if you want to know more about how to make weekly spreads and the basics behind beginner bullet journaling, I recommend going and checking out this video over here because in it, I teach you guys my favorite tips for making weekly spreads. Comment down below a clock emoji if you want to see a part two of this video. And as always, don't forget to subscribe if you want more bullet journal inspiration and tutorials from yours truly. And with that, I'm going to get going. So I hope you guys have a fabulous week and I will see you over in this video. Doodles! Thank you.